how do we prepare for collection day and uh, things we need to know around that. Hello, welcome to Fertile Minds. I'm Scott Salisbury. I'm a fertility specialist with the Queensland Fertility Group in Brisbane. Knowing what to expect before your egg collection can be very helpful. So today we'll talk about how you prepare for the important day um, in your IVF cycle. For those preparing for IVF, we'll appreciate that in the lead up to the egg collection, you'll undergo some daily injections for around 10 to 12 days. And these injections usually encompass a hormone called FSH. This FSH stimulates your um, eggs to grow. And you'll also take another medication which will stop the release of these eggs. That'll typically be in the form of what we call a antagonist, or occasionally it'll be uh, with a GnRH agonist. Both of these achieve the objective of allowing us to time the appropriate time for the egg collection. Along that journey, you will see that um, you'll have a couple of internal vaginal scans, and these will help predict when the best time to um, harvest the eggs will be. And they'll also give you some insight and some expectation of how many eggs you might be able to achieve. Of course, we're not looking at eggs in these scans, we're looking at follicles, which are the fluid-filled sacs around the egg. And that allows us to manage the expectation and sometimes alter the dose um, to achieve the optimum number of eggs that are available. When we uh, recognise that we have the right number of follicles and they are at the right size, we then prepare uh, to trigger ovulation. And typically that would occur 36 to 38 hours prior to your egg collection. Now, that injection usually takes the form of HCG, uh, which is usually administered in the form of a, a medication called Ovidrol or alternately Pregnol. Uh, these are alternatives for the same drug and, and they're used interchangeably. Occasionally you may have another injection called a GnRH agonist, um, and this sometimes we utilise to minimise the risk of ovarian hyperstimulation, and it's typically what we'd use with egg donors. Um, so either way, these injections are fine. The reason for the second drug is solely to reduce the risk of ovarian hyperstimulation, although it does jeopardise the chance of pregnancy in that cycle, so that's not what we'd commonly use if we were going to proceed with an embryo transfer. Also at that time, you'll be given details about your admission to hospital. Now that'll typically be in a day surgery and typically be under general anaesthesia, although we do do them under local anaesthetic as well, uh, but typically under general anaesthesia. This would require a fasting period, and by fasting I mean nil my mouth. So uh, from that point of view, uh, there'd be nothing to eat or drink. So no water, no food, no gum, absolutely nothing in your mouth for those six hours prior to your procedure. You'll also be given a, a time to present to the hospital, and it'd typically be an hour and a quarter, an hour and a half beforehand. And you'd normally prepare for about a four hour stay, staying after the procedure for a couple of hours. It's in that time frame that the admission would be organised and you must uh, ensure that you've made a few administrative uh, decisions before you go to hospital and they will clarify with you that you've signed all the consents, paid all the appropriate invoices um, and have all the appropriate drugs for that evening injection. The day before the procedure typically um, the hospital would ring you and run through all these last minute arrangements again and they'll also advise you um, typically on what clothing to wear. I mean, often that's just loose fitting clothing because you don't want to wear anything too tight around your waist because you will have some discomfort in your abdomen. Um, equally, it's important you don't wear any strong scented perfumes or, or makeup because uh, they can be quite toxic to eggs or embryos. So from that point of view, um, it, it also takes two to tango. And, and from that point of view, we, we get uh, the males to also prepare and ideally they'd abstain for 48 hours prior to the procedure and we'd arrange a time uh, for collection and it's important in advance that uh, you obtain a jar for that because a lot of men would want to uh, produce their sample at home. And from that perspective, uh, the jar can be brought in and delivered at the same time you are admitted to hospital uh, and then the scientists would take it from there. So you've rocked up before about an hour and a half before the procedure, you'll complete all the paperwork and then you'll make what, your way to the theatre complex itself. And during that time frame, you'd see your fertility specialist um, who will run through any last minute questions you might have. And you'll also see the anaesthetist at that point in time. The anaesthetist would run through all their procedure and what's involved. And typically, uh, the anaesthetic would involve an uh, intravenous injection, uh, whereupon you go to sleep shortly after it's injected. Following which, uh, you'd be kept asleep for 15 to 20 minutes, the duration of the procedure. And during that procedure, um, a needle would be placed vaginally, 
under ultrasound control along the same lines as you uh, had in the offices um, in the lead up scans. But on this occasion, a needle guide would be attached to the probe and a needle would be placed into the ovary, uh, one on each side. And through that access, we're able to reach all the follicles that you would have seen on the scan previously. Now, during that procedure, the um, follicles are emptied and um, that fluid is then sent to the laboratory. Because bear in mind, again, the, the eggs are microscopic. We, we can't see the eggs particularly, but we can see these fluid filled spaces. That fluid goes immediately to a scientist who will give us some feedback immediately as to whether we've got an oocyte or an egg. Um, if there's no egg or oocyte there, sometimes we will flush that follicle to try and uh, obtain the egg. Um, so in essence, by the end of the procedure, after about 15 to 20 minutes, we'll know exactly how many eggs you've got. Following which you'll go to recovery, where you'll spend about half an hour on a, a bed while you kept under close observations in the recovery phase. And when you're fully awake, you'll move on to a, a, a chair situation in the recovery area. In that time frame, uh, the fertility specialist would usually come and discuss the number of eggs, uh, the quality of the sperm, and, and what procedures were going to be undertaken that afternoon. And it's that afternoon that uh, the sperm is put with the eggs, either um, in what we call standard IVF, where sperm is just put with the eggs, or indeed we may look at microinjection or, or the ICSI process uh, to achieve fertilisation. Typically, you'd have something to eat and drink in, in that recovery area, and, and then you'd be collected to take home. And it's imperative that you do uh, arrange for someone to come and pick you up uh, in advance. Um, uh, even if you are having the procedure under local anaesthetic, I always think it's a good idea to, to have someone pick you up anyway. Following that, you'll be given instructions uh, about what to do the following day in terms of uh, who to ring to find out how many eggs have fertilised. And also, you'll um, be given instructions about what medications to take the following day as well. Um, and hopefully that'll be quite clear. So hopefully that's given you some insight into the events around egg collection. Just bear in mind that we're all individuals and, and your story will be very different to anyone else in the bed next to you. So they may get more or less eggs. Their situation may be completely different. And the principle of seeing a fertility specialist is to be able to individualise your treatment to optimise uh, your outcome. As a fertility specialist, we understand that this is a very stressful time. And of course, in the whole process, this is probably the most important time in terms of if the trigger's given inappropriate at the wrong time, um, or we don't get the egg harvest that we require, that adds even more stress to the scenario. So I think it's important that you're very comfortable with the process as it stands. And, and by asking lots of questions, both the fertility specialists and, and the relevant nurses and indeed the staff on the day, I think that goes a long way to allaying your anxiety. Certainly discussions around what discomfort you may experience afterwards, which we should be able to fully manage, um, and how you'll feel in the ensuing 24 hours is, is all important in, in delaying those anxieties. Uh, I can't stress enough that uh, you are an individual and everyone interprets things differently. And so whilst it's all very good to give generic advice, it's important that you take the piecemeal pieces that are important for you and, uh, and ask those questions. Thank you very much for watching and uh, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thank you.